This is the podcast for the journal Neuropsychopharmacology. I'm Cynthia Graber. In the past, there had been a school of thought that looked at evolution linearly. That is, you could in theory draw a line among mammals as they evolved, and so say rodent brains would basically be less evolved primate brains. That turns out not to be true. Evolution is much more like a branching tree, and each branch then goes on to develop independently, sometimes in parallel. Some groups of animals, such as primates, can evolve features of their brains that other groups simply don't have. And now, with advanced DNA sequencing, scientists have been able to determine which groups of mammals are more closely related than others. And so they figured out that, for instance, tree shrews and flying lemurs are more closely related to primates than rodents are. So there is uh, much more nuance to mammalian evolution than I think neuroscientists have been used to. And this also affects how we understand what's going on in terms of brain evolution. You know, if you believe in a phylogenetic scale, you say, well, anything that's present in the lower mammal that I study is going to be present in higher mammals. It may be elaborated or more sophisticated, but it's all there. And that's not necessarily true because things can get lost in evolution and different groups of mammals can evolve quite similar things convergently in parallel. Now, tree shrews, one of our closest relatives, they provide an interesting case because there is some evidence that they may have some regions of granular prefrontal cortex. There are some recent papers that suggest that. And there's an older, older paper as well, a lesion study, which suggests that they may have spatial working memory abilities that are similar to primates. Todd Price is a professor of pathology at Emory University and an associate research professor at the Yerkes National Primate Research Center. He's co-author with Stephen Wise of a review article in the journal Neuropsychopharmacology called Evolution of Prefrontal Cortex. Dr. Preuss says that classically, the prefrontal cortex of primates has been regarded as critical for higher cognitive functions. But it's also important from a neurological and psychiatric standpoint. Many important disorders of the brain, including mood disorders, depression, and other psychiatric disorders, involve dysfunction of the prefrontal cortex. And these are disorders that scientists often try to understand by using rodent models as well as by studying humans. So uh, in primates, the largest part of the prefrontal cortex is what I like to call granular prefrontal cortex. And this occupies the lateral and dorsolateral surfaces of the hemisphere and extends a bit onto the orbital cortex and the medial surface of the hemisphere as well. And the reason it's called granular is because it's neocortex. It has six layers. The fourth layer is the internal granular layer can see it's got a lot of little cells in it called granule cells. The other parts of the prefrontal cortex lack that internal granular layer. And as far as I can tell, many or most other mammals don't have that granular stuff. And rodents certainly don't. And so most neuroscientists who study mammals study rodents. And it simply wasn't acceptable to have primates have something that rodents didn't have. So as you describe in your paper, researchers basically went looking for a homologue to this brain region in rodents. They went looking for a part of the brain that was literally the same as in primates and particularly in humans. In humans, they looked for the connectivity of the granular frontal cortex. They saw it was connected to the mediodorsal nucleus. And then they looked for that happening in rodents. Basically, they looked for where the mediodorsal nucleus projected in rodents, found a region in the brain, and went bingo. Yes. Well, people thought, okay, we've got our rodent homolog of granular prefrontal cortex. The problem is, it turns out that nucleus MD also projects to the anterior cingulate areas in primates. Now, why is this important? Well, those anterior cingulate regions are regions that are very important with respect to neuropsychiatric disorders, mood disorders, and things like that. So it still leaves rodents without the granular prefrontal cortex, and that leaves them without sort of a model of the structures that are involved in higher cognitive functions in 
primates, including humans. In your paper, you also tease out how different brain structures are even among primates. You know, for people who want to study higher cognitive functions, I mean, people usually think of macaque monkeys as being sort of the model of choice. But we know that there are functions in humans that involve prefrontal cortex, say language functions, and certain abstract reasoning functions for which macaque monkeys are probably not adequate models either, because within the primate order, you know, there's been a great deal of evolution. We know that there's been a lot of change in gene expression in the last six or seven million years uh, since humans split from chimpanzees, but we don't really know what that means in terms of the functions of prefrontal cortex. So there are still a lot of questions to be explored. So for scientists today who would like to study the prefrontal cortex by using model systems such as rats and mice, based on your research, what recommendations do you have? Well, I think there's a lot. A lot of the sort of basic mechanisms of reinforcement, reinforcement learning, sort of classic learning theory, a lot of that involves the medial and orbital prefrontal cortex. And there's a lot you can do with that. And, you know, a lot about the hedonic properties of stimuli in the environment, rewarding objects, also about the hedonic consequences of particular behaviors and the mechanisms of habit formation, classic learning theory stuff. And that's very important. And and that's important for primates and humans as, as well as for rodents. So there, there is a lot that can be done. Are there areas of research that are not as well served because there isn't a homologue in rodent brains for this granular prefrontal cortex? Well, yes. I mean, there are uh, mechanisms of attention, particularly visually guided attention, and sort of the classic working memory tasks, spatial delayed response, delayed match to sample, things like that, that have been thought to tap in to the mechanisms where animals, they see what's happened in their environment and what kind of behaviors are likely to result in a reward within a minute or so. Those sorts of things, those working memory tasks, I don't think that they're really accessible in rodents. So to take a broad look at this review, what would you say are some of your big picture conclusions that you would hope people would walk away with after reading your paper? You know, beyond any of the sort of specific claims that are made in this paper, I would hope they would come away with a sense of how evolutionary biologists view the relationships between different mammalian species today and think about how that affects the way they generalize from the particular species they study to, say, humans, which is, you know, one of our our major goals in neuroscience. It sounds like you're saying that both in terms of understanding evolution and also in terms of finding models to understand the human brain, we need to broaden our neuroscience research and include more species. I am all for that. This is a case where, where more is better. And if you really want to understand why brains are organized the way they are, it's not enough to just, you know, take one animal and pick that system apart in detail. I am a great believer that we should be studying more different kinds of animals. Unfortunately, the the funding priorities seem to be to to concentrate more and more research in fewer and fewer animals. So it's not clear that we're going to have tree shrew colonies to study in the future. This is the podcast for the journal Neuropsychopharmacology. To read the paper discussed in the podcast, go to www.nature.com slash NPP. I'm Cynthia Graber.